I'm seriously looking forward to the dry erase board because that's kind of what we talked about. That was that was my only pet peeve about doing the show yesterday. Man, you got to do the dry erase board, man. You can't. We can't just have a conversation. We talk. You got to right. put it back there. And I thought you throw the hit in there too. <laughs> okay, he's he's making sure that I have the dry erase board. But your dry erase board is our visual. Is oh, you can you I'm, take us on this journey. I'm excited for it. I don't know what it's gonna be, but like I said, I love to bring this. I think that's the educator in me. What I have is wow. you gave us you gave an illustration on your page about being in a boat. Do you remember what that is? I'm trying not to say it because I don't I want you to draw it up. Yeah. Being on a boat, and sometimes people jump ship. Take us down that journey of what you were describing for everybody about jumping off the life raft and the anchor. Cool. So we're going to have this boat and we're going to call it, it's going to be like the love boat. Everybody, if you're in, if you're seeking to have a long lasting relationship, um, a lot of people, I don't, how far? Okay. So this is the shore. You got two people. You got two people who decide, hey, we like each other. We've been on dates. Let's give love a shot. So now what they do is they they jump into this ocean and hop on the love boat. So the love boat is really glamorous. A lot of people love being on there because they can take selfies. They can take pictures. They can go on vacations. And That's it's cool. supposed to be the vehicle that takes you to whatever your ultimate goal or destination is for a relationship. But what people don't realize is that this boat goes through multiple storms. Actually, it looks for them. The boat is always in the midst. It would not always. It is likely to encounter storms. Matter of fact, when you get on the boat, the boat says there will be storms. But because the boat is so luxurious, people don't read that. They see the sail. They see the pictures that they get to take. They see all the fluffy stuff. And when the storm actually hits, there's two things that 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 happen. People often will throw a life raft off. They'll get out of the boat and they'll go over here and they'll float and they'll leave the relationship. And so essentially, when you get off that boat and you're no longer on there, you got to find your own way back to shore to start all over again. And so. So many times in relationships, people get into this cycle of they find somebody, they get in a relationship, but they jump off again. And now they got to swim back eventually to start this whole process over again, all because there's a storm and they don't see how they can get through it. So what people don't realize is that the more you jump off the boat, you're always in this rat race of finding someone starting over. And this is tiring. This part is where you hear everyone say, man, I'm tired of dating. There are no good prospects. Um, there, there's no one good out there in the world. Not realizing that this storm is inevitably going to come to every single relationship you have at some point and people jump off. But the goal over here, there's an island over here that everyone strives to get to. And this is called Peace Island. And, and the journey... You said, you said peace? You said peace island, right? Peace island, yes. Okay. If you're able to have peace as one of the destinations, then it doesn't matter what kind of storm you encounter, you're not going to get off the boat and you can make it to wherever your destination is. It's important to get here also because it stops you from also getting in this, this <laughs> never-ending cycle of yeah. it right. right. I don't like it, so yeah. let me start over. So I always yeah. encourage people to to let them know that the, the ultimate goal isn't happiness because no one is going to be happy 24 seven. It, it's not possible. Right. Right. You right. Can't, right. You can't even, nothing is a hundred percent. Nothing is a hundred percent, but what you can have in any and all situations, you can have peace. Gandhi had peace in the midst of a famine. Listen, Martin Luther King had peace sitting in a, in a jail cell. Peace can withstand these storms. So if you're able to get to a place where you're at Peace Island, you can make it to wherever you want to with your relationship. But you have to get to peace. So so Nashville, describe Nashville for people like myself who have never been there. 
Okay, it would be described as uh, country music kind of town. Um, it's very mixed and diverse, um, like many other cities, but it has a deep musical culture. Um, it has also a lot of great pockets of um, history, depending on what you're into, whether it's a uh, civil rights movement. Uh, for those who don't know, like Nashville was one of the first locations where they had the first organized sit-ins. So we have a lot of rich history and stuff, um, museums, a lot of historical colleges and things of that nature. And we have great museums as well. And I can't let it not be mentioned, but the food is good here too. Whatever you like, we got it, but we're most known for like the hot chicken, national okay. hot chicken, like they have hot chicken in China. Uh, that's how popular our hot chicken is. So, yes, if you see that, like any type of hot chicken, it originates yeah. in Nashville. And that's the basis because I know it's an emotional kind of yeah. experience that people are having. To be able to, to be outside of it and see it allows you to think about it better. Yeah. Because while you're in it, we're not thinking about the negative dating cycles or the negative habits that we perpetuate and how we are kind of responsible for some of the stuff that goes on or our lack of ability and able to identify what is happening. So when you take a really emotional thing like dating and you allow people to be on the outside looking in, now there's reduced uh, anxiety about it. There's reduced pressure. And now I can objectively think about it. And I can think without being in the, in the moment and having to make decisions really right. quick. Yeah. So that's kind of yeah. like why I do the board. And it's starting to, I think, really evolve because I'm understanding the emotional part a lot more. And certain parts where people are able to identify, I had someone tell me like, hey, when you talked about this, my heart started racing, but it wasn't so bad because I wasn't in it. Like I could identify right. being in that situation, but now I have a lower level of anxiousness about it. And now I see the cycle that is happening. And so that's one of those things that I kind of want to be able to do because like I said, Everybody learns in different ways. And with emotionally charged topics, it's really hard to see it clearly when your emotions are going. See the relationship pattern and able, uh, in order to be able to understand what's going on. And so I, I appreciate your appreciation for it. And, <laughs> and it definitely being something that I'm definitely going to keep doing in the so, future. I just want to give everybody, for instance, like the premise of why I do the podcast. And, and the purpose of doing the podcast is so that everybody can be a part of a conversation that they're not normally a part of. So hey, hold, but, on, hold on one second before you go. That is my bad. I totally forgot everybody. Most of you probably know. But for anybody that watches this later, uh, um, Joseph has a podcast. Um, tell everybody about the podcast real quick before you get started. I sure. should have said that at the beginning. Sure. So I'm the uh, the host of the Love Unscripted podcast, where we have unscripted conversations with millennials about relationships and dating. And our main objective is to talk about relationships and dating in a way that is productive and a way that we actually get tools and strategies for how to actually uh, alleviate some of the challenges, reduce some of the stress, and just to do it better and become better people in the process. And so what I've tried to do with pretty much any topic I can think of is I just am trying to be the middleman facilitating the conversation about whatever these relationship challenges are. Because it's not realistic that we have all of the information in our own circle of influence, our own spheres of influence. Correct, Correct. That's right. logical. But because we have technology, we should be able to utilize it in a way that benefits us in all areas of our lives, not, not just financially, not just educationally, but emotionally and socially. We have one of the strongest tools in, in like world history, this the, the internet. And if we have, if we can use the internet to position ourselves to be able to receive tools just by listening for 30 minutes, yo, that's a game changer. That can actually change the trajectory of people's lives and family without listen here's here's the thing that you don't even have to pay for it you don't even have to <laughs> that's true that's true it's free 
People say therapy is expensive. People say these coaching programs and masterminds are expensive. You just got to go on iTunes and Spotify, wherever you listen, and find a chair. Who is offering what you need? And listen to it. How would you describe and discuss when a woman is a female narcissist? Ooh. So I'm going to put a woman right here. I'm going I'm to put uh, the guy right here. Hold on. I got to get her hair in. Forget, uh, give me some time. Okay. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to put a, a rope right here to symbolize, like, the connection. But got it. Got it. He does, and one of the things of a, a female narcissist, I would say one of the things that's so common, and I'm going to put gas right here, is gaslighting. And, okay. and, and pretty much what that is is making people think that their experiences aren't real, that it's all in their head, and that what they're saying isn't true. And over a long period of time of setting that, that, that fire, people – tend to go crazy. Like, it's literally difficult to experience something and you know it happened, but someone you care about is telling me you're making it up. So this, this gaslighting, it, it, it severs a relationship. It puts a big divide. And now this person is in a, a spiral of trying to figure out what reality is. Because they're like, hold on, did, did that really happen? And now they feel stuff like shame, they, they, they feel lost, confused. And all this time, they're playing the victim because nothing is ever their fault. They're, right, they're right, right. The whole pressure of this whole fire on this person, saying it's, in, it's not really what they're thinking, it's not really what they're experiencing. So this whole thing is, is a really big mess. And, and a lot of people are in these. I'm actually doing a three-part series. It's funny you said this. I'm doing a three-part series on being in a, a narcissistic relationship, how to get out of a, a narcissistic relationship, cool. and what to do if you had narcissistic parents. So that's all. Got it. What part about you that sometimes is undervalued by other people? What is it there about you that some people undervalue about you? Illustrate it, discuss it, or both? So I don't even know how I would draw this one, but it's that I genuinely desire people's success just as much as I value mine. And, and for me, that comes from a, a principle of loving others like I love myself. And I, I, I tend to think that I do, uh, when it comes to stuff that I value and stuff that I'm striving for, I want it to be successful. But for other people, I want that the same. And so when I'm kind of, if I'm advising somebody or someone's asking me, I get a lot of questions about purpose. Like, what am I supposed to do? They, like, they say, like, it seems like you found your purpose, but I tell them how to do it. And they're like, man, that's really tough. I don't know if I can do all that. But I'm not saying it because it's a fun process. I'm saying it because I truly value your success just as much as mine. Draw, illustrate for me what's in your head when you say that you want others to attain to peace and find their purpose. All right. So I'll say me right here, someone that has a question mark, I'm going to do a little cartoon bubble about what it okay. is. Right. Me, I got a, everyone says I got a thousand and one ideas and, and, prob and, and solutions. So what I'm trying to do is, like, what do you need? Like, what is it? Where, where is the roadblock? Because I can come up with something in here and I can help you with that. Because because I've read and, and statistics show that like so my my if you're familiar with the Enneagram, I'm an INTJ. That means I'm really analytical, I think through things, but I have a thousand and one solutions to a thousand and two problems. So I can think that and, and I just have all these ideas and what I want to do is figure out some way 
to, to put it on a, on a platter that's, that's small, that's digestible, so that you can get to whatever your mountain of success looks like. I knew you would enjoy that one. Looking forward to you joining us again, please. We ask you to follow and support our guests. Uh, You will find uh, all the information you need in the description for this video. We truly appreciate your support. Tap the subscribe button if you like our content. And by all means, let YouTube know you want more of our shows hit the super thanks button to donate to our podcast shows and our channel to keep us running at high level Uh, we appreciate all that you've done for us up to this point but right now time for me to go in a tv youtube podcast right here on na tv network Oh, yeah.